God bless you and welcome back. Thank you for joining us once again. And if you join us for the first time, welcome to my Heroes Hall of Fame series, part 46. Now we're looking at how to overcome temptation. Last week we um, learned certain facts about temptation, that is the truth of temptation. Now if you've missed any of our messages, you can always watch it online at our YouTube channel, which is YouTube at Noah's Ark Sanctuary Church. Now we're doing a series which is based on the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 22, and that's about the life of Joseph, you know, um, his walk of faith. So we've camped, you know, we've stayed in the life of Joseph because we've learned a lot from Joseph. So last week we talked about truth of, the truth of temptation, which is that temptation comes to everyone. Okay, no one is exempt. Even our Lord was tempted. And also we learned that temptation is not seen. To be tempted is not seen because our Lord was tempted and yet without Seen and also we can be te tempted in the areas of our flesh to do with our, that is the appetite, sexuality. We could be te tempted in, in the areas of material things that is, you know, the loss of the eyes. You know, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Or we could be tempted in the area of pride, the pride of life, you know, to have a superiority comp com complex, you know, self conceit, you know, the high inflated opinion of ourselves, pride in our achievements and possessions. We also learned that God will not allow us to be tempted beyond our capacity. That is, God will not allow you to go through things you cannot handle. You will always make a way of escape. We also learned that temptation can be persistent. You know, looking at the life of Joseph, we learned that Mrs. Potiphar was persistent. You know, so we need to be strong and, and be encouraged not to give in, even though temptation can be persistent. We also learned that those who are in the front line of the Christian faith, those who like leaders or, or in, in our faith, or those who are on fire for the Lord, face a high barrage of temptations, you know, they, 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 they um, face pressure from the enemy because of their position in society. And that's why we need to pray for our leaders. And that's why today, um, when leaders fall, it affects the whole congregation. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 26, 31, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, he said, Jesus told them, tonight all of you will desert me, for the scriptures say, um, strike the shepherd and the flock will be scattered. And that's why Satan aims for leaders, aims for um, church leaders, because he knows when they fall, there will be division, the church will scatter. And also, the leaders that are home, and that's why, you know, um, um, husbands, we need to pray for fathers and husbands because you know they are the head of the home, and Satan horses attack on them because he knows when he gets the head, he, um, you know, the family is broken apart because he knows the importance of fatherly role, which is to provide, to be a, a, a pastor, a priest, to be a provider and a protector. But what we want to learn today is how do we achieve victory over temptation? Praise God, we are not let, let, left in the dark. The Bible tells us how in the following ways. Number one, we need to pray, pray, and pray. You know, what did Jesus personally say about temptation? You know, he told us what to do. In uh, Matthew 26, verse 41, he said, Watch and pray, lest you fall into temptation. That's the authorized version. And uh, I've got the new, the, the living Bible version. It says, Keep alert and pray. Otherwise, temptation will overpower you. For the spirit indeed is willing, but how weak the body is. For some of you know who are familiar with the authorized version, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, the key verse is, if we do not pray, there is consequences of not praying enough. And the scripture tells us that temptation will overpower you. The tempter will overpower you. You know, you, you will be overcome by temptation. You know, uh, in Luke 21, 36, again, uh, it says, they said, and uh, written from the New Living Translation, it says, Keep alert at all times and pray that you may be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. Meaning, if we do not pray, we will overcome by evil circumstances. The devil will overcome us, we fall into temptation. And also, if we are not praying enough, 
You know, it means we are not going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we know it's, the Holy Spirit is very important in our life because the Holy Spirit is, is the person that supplies our strength and power to overcome temptation. Now, one thing we have to realize is not many intend to, to fall into temptation or, or plan to fall into sin. You know, you know no, one, no one has it that, oh, how oh, can I fall into temptation? Not, none of us do, okay? Um, but, but because we are spiritual, spiritually weak, we lose control. That's what happens. When we are spiritually weak, when we are not filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, when we are not staying in a place where we are plugged in and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, we will lose control to sexual sin. We will, we will lose control to, to, to anger, to, to envy, to, 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 um, to revenge. Uh, we, we will lose control to lying, to stealing, or even den denying our Lord and so forth. Let's look at a biblical example in the Old Testament. And this is a famous man of God, you know, we all know, which is King David. In, in 2 Samuel 11, verse 1 to 4, we read, what happened to David. In the spring of the year, when kings normally go out to war, David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. They destroyed the Ammonite army and laid siege to the city of Rabbah. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Late one afternoon after his midday rest, after he got up from bed, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of the palace. As he looked out over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. So he sent someone to find out who she was and he was told she's Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Etide. Then David sent messengers to get her and when she came to the palace, he slept with her. She had just completed her purification rites and having her menstrual period. Then she returned home. Now, let's look at this story. Now, King David didn't wake up that day to say, oh, who can I sleep with? Who can I commit adultery with? He never had that intention. But what was his mistake? He wasn't where he was supposed to be. He was supposed to be in prayer fighting the Lord's battle. But David decided to stay around, to stay behind, to take a nap, to take a nap, to have a midday rest. And was when he got out of bed, you know, he found himself in, in a place that was prepared for him by the devil because if we're not in the right place, Satan will prepare a place for us. So he fell into sin. He, because of his lack of spiritual strength, even though he was told that this woman that was, that, that was, that was with unusual beauty, you know, was married, but still he, he was so weak that his sexual orgies overpowered him. And that's what happens when we're not in the place of prayer, when we're not filled with the Holy Spirit, we will overcome by temptation. Okay, and let's take another example in the New Testament. And, and this is regards uh, our Lord Jesus and the disciples. So we, um, we, 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 could look, we can pick up the story from Matthew chapter 26 from verse 33 to 56. Uh, and Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Verse 34, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. No, Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all other disciples vowed the same. Now these people, you know, we know the end of the story. Uh, let's go to um, verse, um, let's go to, let's fast forward to um, verse, 50, okay, verse 55, okay, verse 55, that's March 26, 55. Then Jesus said to the crowd, am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this all happening... This all, all was happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At that point, all the disciples deserted and fled. Now, from the beginning of this uh, beginning, the disciples said, you know, Lord, I vow, if, uh, that was Peter in the first place, 
um, even put himself above us. That even if others deny you, I wouldn't deny. I, you know, and all the disciples vowed, meaning they never intended to betray the Lord. But the mistake came when they were supposed to be praying. If we back, back up to verse 40, um, verse 40, 39. Okay, so he said, he went a little farther, bowed with his face to the ground, praying, my father, if it's possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yeah, I want your will, not mine, not mine, be done. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even an hour? Now, the disciples were asleep instead of praying. So when temptation came, they fell. Now, they didn't intend to fall, but because they were weak spiritually, Okay, they were weak, they were not, they, were, they didn't stay, they weren't alert, they, they weren't filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So, when the robber hit the road, you know, they succumbed to temptation, you know, they fell into temptation and decided the Lord. So, what does that tell us? We need to discipline our body or it will master us. You know, like we read, uh, read, we read again, uh, let's look at Matthew 26, verse 21 again. But this time I'm going to read it in the, in the message paraphrase. He said, stay alert, be in prayer, so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you are in danger. Okay? There is a part of you that is eager, ready for anything in God. But there is another part that is as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. Let's unpack this verse. Stay alert and be in prayer. Now the disciples were not alert. You know, they were sleeping. Okay? Um, not knowing that danger was around and this we also need to know that there is invisible evil around us there's there, there's danger you know out there there's as the psalmist and the psalm night one says there's arrows that fly invisible evil arrows that fly by day and that fly by night and we need to be in prayer we need to and to be in prayer means as the psalmist says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high abides under the shadow of the almighty Okay, so now the spirit is willing. They were eager. The Peter and his, uh, Peter were eager to go in, uh, you know, to go out for the Lord. But there's that side of us. The Bible calls the flesh is weak, and that's why we need to discipline our body, because the flesh always wants to dominate us. It wants to dominate our life. It wants us to be sleeping. Instead of praying and reading about it, I'm sure you can identify with this. You know, when it's time to read the Bible or pray, you know, I have fallen into that myself. You know, just begin to doze off. So, okay. So, the flesh wants us to be sleeping instead of praying. It wants us to be sleeping. It's, it's, it wants us to be sleeping or playing instead of doing something productive. You know, the flesh loves pleasure, something that excites it. But when it comes to the things, spiritual things, it begins to back down, you know, and to say, no, I don't want to. But we need to, to, to um, uh, rule our body. Uh, uh, we, we need to rule it by our spirit. Because if we allow our feelings, okay, or our, our, our flesh to call the shots in our life, you know, instead of doing what is right, then we will experience lack, poverty, misery and defeat will be our portion i pray that will not be our portion in jesus name look at what the bible says in proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 to 11 it says take a lesson from the ants you lazy bones learn from their ways and become wise though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them walk they labor hard all summer gathering food for the winter but you lazy bones how long will you sleep when will you wake up a little extra sleep a little more slumber a little folding of their hands to rest then poverty will pounce on you like a bounty. Scarcity will attack you like a ham robber. And that's what happened to David. You know, David was sleeping instead of being the battle, fighting the, the fighting the battles of the law. You know, uh, he, he, and the disciples too were supposed to be watching with our Lord, but they were they were sleeping. So this is a warning to us that sometimes things that we, uh, that happen in our life, if we are allowed to happen, the bad things. You know, it's not supposed to. If only we stay on our knees, if only we are allowed. Okay, the Lord commands us that we need to discipline our body. Our body could be an enemy 
to our lives. We need to exercise control through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, this is, again, what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, New King James Version. He says, For I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself become disqualified. Okay? So, we need to bring our body in subjection to our spirit man, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Um, the New Living Translation says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should it should because you know like any normal person you know you um an athlete might feel like eating certain kind of foods but you know he would just mean say no i can't eat that because it will affect my training it will affect my um physical fitness or you know the, the, the an, athlete, an athlete might might feel like you know you know having a nap or you know uh, or laying having a lay in not getting up early but he, he would think you know what i've got to even though i don't feel like getting up i need to get up because i need to be consistent in my training because if not i've already lost the battle okay so again let's look at the new let's look at let's look at another scripture from the new testament romans 8 12 to 14 i'm reading from the new king james where it says therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh or if you live according to the flesh you will die Okay, but if by the spirit, if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the spirit are the sons of God. So you can see this is very important. We are not debtors. That is, we don't have any obligation to do what our sinful nature wants. It wants, it wants to, the, the flesh wants to sleep. You know, uh, it, it wants to play when you are supposed to be doing something productive. You know, but the Bible says through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can subdue, you know, the deeds of the body. We can, you know, put to death, you know, the desires of our sinful nature. And that comes through prayer. Because when we pray, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how we Christians get charged up. Just as you charge your mobile phone, you know, um, through the electric cable, you know. Uh, you know so we charge ourselves, in, you know, through prayer. The Spirit of God fills us. The Bible says they, those that wait upon the Lord renew their strength. So that's why we cannot afford not to pray. So prayer is essential, not a body. Do we get that? Okay, it's, not, it, it's essential for us. It, it shouldn't be a body. It shouldn't be a, a distraction. Okay? Uh, uh, um, um, the Bible says we need to watch and pray. That means we need to prepare. We need to create time because this is serious. We need to be disciplined. We need to discipline our body. We need to discipline ourselves. We cannot afford not to pray. Prayer is it's essential to our victorious Christian life. It shouldn't be a burden to us. But for many of us, it's, be, it's becoming a burden because we, allow, we have wrong priorities. We are not organized. You know, this is what the Bible says in Isaiah 43. 43 verse 22 he said but their family of jacob you have refused to ask for my help you've refused to pray you've you've grown tired of me you've grown weary of me you know mika 6 chapter 6 verse 3 says oh my people what have i done to you what have i done to make you tired of me you see when we fail to pray you know you know when we feel it's a body it's like we're saying god you know you are boring but when it comes to entertainment tv social media oh our eyes are all you know on fire Look at what Job 21, 14 to 15 says. And yet they say to God, go away. We want to, we are, we are no part of you and your ways. Who is the Almighty? Why should we obey him? What good would it do to us to pray? I pray we'll not get to that stage where we feel, what's the use of praying? Or using prayer as a last resort. All we can do is to pray. No, that's, that's very bad. We must always put God first. We must always commit our work unto the Lord. Okay, we must always stay connected. To God, and again, Jeremiah two thirty two. He said, "Does a bride had a, you know, hide a wedding dress? Yet for years, and my people have forgotten me. Let us not forget God. Prayer is very essential to our living victoriously in our Christian faith. Prayer is the source of our power, and the devil knows that, and that's why he keeps us busy and distracted. Even with church work, too many activities, too many programs, we don't have time to sit alone like Mary, on the." Jesus feet just to receive and be quiet and be still and know that it's God and we get refreshed and empowered. Colossians 4 verse 2 says devote yourself to prayer that's nearly even translated devote or in New King James be earnest in prayer devote yourself to prayer okay with an alert mind 
and a thankful man. Once I like my that is be what you be. Know what you are praying. Just don't pray like machine. Don't just pray like like you go into the motion. You know, like you just repeat some prayer like wrote. You know, you just you know, like it become ritual. You just say it. You know, you don't even know you are saying it. Just say it by uh, in, in your brain. It's, it's, it doesn't come from your heart. Prayer is relationship with God. Where you have one to one quality conversation with God, not just repeating certain prayers. You know, our Father, what in hallowed be then, or hear me, you know, or, or just saying some um, um, uh, prayer warrior prayer, prayer points. Okay, that's that's not. We need to be careful. Okay, it might help you in a certain, but you know, that's not prayer. Prayer should be heart to heart to God. Okay. Uh, and it's sin for us not to pray. This is what Samuel said. As for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you. I'm going to teach you what is good and right. So we need to be instant in prayer. Sin not to pray. Okay? You might not even do some major sin, uh, you know, break God's command. But in, if, when we fail to pray, it's sin because we are failing to do something good. James 4 17 says, Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do. And then not do it. Amen. So the next thing we're going to talk about is on how to overcome prayer, overcome sorry temptation is reject the thoughts of temptation immediately. Okay, reject the thoughts of temptation immediately. Okay, temptation is the first thought or imagination that comes to our mind. Okay, the Bible tells us that we are not fighting with in, we are not fighting with flesh and blood, but invisible spirits who seek to pollute our souls, to defile us, to make us unclean, and eventually lead us into sin. So evil thoughts, imaginations, feelings of fear, depression, anxiety, envy, hate, bitterness, unworthiness, feeling of worthlessness, condemnation, guilt, fear, all these are all fairy dads that is shot at our minds by the devil and his demons okay now one thing we have realized is that we cannot control the thoughts that come into our hearts or that Satan shoots in our mind okay we cannot control these passing thoughts or feelings but we can decide whether to think on them or to reject them okay we cannot stop evil thoughts but we can stop thinking evil thoughts like someone said and you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can't stop it from nesting on it. So, the moment temptation comes to our mind, that imagination or feeling or a, a negative feeling, we should immediately reject it and not meditate upon it. Temptation becomes sin when we don't deal with it immediately, okay? And it becomes sinful thinking. You know, like Jesus said in Matthew 5. Verse 20 said, You have had the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. But I say, anyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in her heart. That even sin can be committed in your heart. So, so when, it begin, when, you have, when that talk comes to your mind or that feeling, you need to stop it. Now, the Bible says the weapons of defeating these evil thoughts or feelings are not physical weapons but spiritual. Now if we open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from 45 we read, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty true God, you know, in pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So we bring every thought, every unclean thought, every evil thought, every, you know, uh, um, um, evil feeling, we bring it captive, we, we make it obey the word of God, okay? That is 2 Corinthians 10, 45. So what are these weapons, you know, that we, can, we are called to use to bring down the strongholds? Now, if you turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 28, we'll read um, um, a, a letter to the Ephesian church, Paul was encouraging them to be strong. He said, be strong from Ephesians chapter 6 from verse. He said, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. So what's the whole arm of God? The whole arm of God is the whole truth, the whole word of God. Okay? And, and, and why should we put on the whole arm of God? Because we are not fighting against flesh and blood. 
you know, enemies, but against evil rulers, authorities uh, of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark, this dark, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Stand your ground, put on the belt of truth, you know, and the body of armor of God's righteousness. That is the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the belt of truth because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Our life must, 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 must speak truth. Not just our words, but our life must speak truth. And also the breastplate of right that Christ is our righteousness. You know, you know, we, we come to God not in our righteousness, but in Christ's righteousness. It's our righteousness. Okay, we put on shoes, uh, 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 um, shoes of peace. Okay, and also we put on the shield of faith. Verse sixteen. In addition to all this, hold up the shield. Take off the shield of faith. You know, and that's the key verse. I want to just rest on the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil, the fiery darts. What are the fiery darts? The evil imaginations, the thoughts of fear, uncleanliness, impurity, sexual thoughts, uh, anxiety, depression, guilt, condemnation, you know, whatever evil thoughts, you know, worry, these are from, from the enemy. So we need to, to bring them down through the shield of faith. And where does the shield for faith come from? It comes from the Word of God. That is, we replace every evil thought, satanic lies, with the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God. This is what David said to encourage us in. How can a young man stay pure when the enemy shoot is that? But obey your Word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your. And verse 11 I have hidden your Word in my heart that I am not sin against you. That's very important again that we have the Word of God in you. Because if you don't have the word, you don't have the weapons to fight the devil. The Spirit cannot bring out your weapons if you don't have anything stored there for the Holy Spirit to bring out. So it's very important that you read the word of God there. You meditate on the word of God. Uh, and because when the temptation comes, the Holy Spirit will remind you of what you've read to fight against the word of God. David said, I have hidden your word in my heart. Not under my pillow, not um, hanging on, the, on my shelf. You know, not on my pastor's or priest's lips, but in my heart, you have to hide God's word in your heart. But how can you hide if you are not reading God's word? Okay, this is again what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 8, on replacing the truth, uh, replacing lies of the enemy, sorry, with the word of God. It says, um, Philippians 4, from, from verse 6, New Living Translation, don't worry about anything. Okay, that's another fear of the enemy. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. It's peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Okay? So when the enemy comes with his own evil thoughts, you, you replace it with truth, what is honorable what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable. Think about things that are excellent, worthy of praise. So we have to take action, not just to be um, a tape recorder for the enemy to play his evil songs. We have to reject it. We need to eject it and replace it with what is true, you know, from God's word, what is worthy of praise, what is lovely, okay, what is admirable, what is true what is honorable so let the psalmist prayer be our prayer and what is the psalmist prayer david's prayer psalm 19 13 to 40 said keep your servant from deliberate sins keep me from presumption sins don't let them control me then i'll be free of guilt and innocent of great sin may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you O oh lord my rock and my redeemer so we pray that our meditation we be accepted. That is what kind of meditation? Good meditation, holy meditation, the meditation of the truth of the word of God, not evil meditation, not thoughts of fear, not thoughts of anxiety, not of pride, 
of anger, of envy, of unworthiness, of guilt. We think the truth of the word of God that says he loves us. We are beloved. We are accepted. We are forgiven. We are a child of God. We are royal priesthood. I am, I'm, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am blessed. I am forgiven. I am loved by God. God has a good plan for me. God has a wonderful future ahead of me. He is with me. He will never leave me or forsake me. He's my strength. He's my refuge. He's He's my righteousness, he's my helper, he's my guide, he's my provider, my deliverer, the one who lifts me up, my joy. That's what we speak, that's what we declare. Amen. So, let's look at another one how to overcome temptation. So far, we've looked at one, we pray. In order to overcome temptation. Two, we reject the thoughts of temptation immediately. Three, the last one we'll finish up with, you declare your faith from the beginning. Genesis 39, I will read now. No one here is more, has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be great sin against God. Now, remember Mrs. Potiphar was making advances to Joseph. She's married. She's got her own husband, but yet she wanted to commit adultery. But David said, you know, I can't sin against I'm a believer in God. Joseph declared his faith in God from the beginning. He made Mrs. Potiphar realize that his faith is in God his, and, and his fear of God was the basis of the refusal of advances. So we need to declare our faith in the beginning so people know where we stand at school, at work, you know, even in church. Let people know where you stand. Let your yes be yes and no be no. It helps restrain most people from crossing the line when they know where you stand. You are not, you are not um, an hypocrite. You are not one leg in the world and one leg in the church. They know you're a God-fearing person. And they know where, don't go and talk gossip with that person. Don't go and introduce him to him because you know that man is a God-fearing man. We should not be ashamed to declare our faith. In, in, in a culture today that is becoming more and more anti-Christ, anti-Christian, you know, hostile to the Christian faith. By declaring our faith, we so restrained, you know, um, uh, um, we, we restrain evil around us. And we also sow seeds of, of the word of God in people's hearts that will lead to their salvation. We should never be ashamed of our God, okay? Because um, once you stand firm, God will back you up and fight for you. Luke 9, 23 to 26 says, Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, or my disciple, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross and follow me. Okay? To take up the cross means that when, because we love Christ, we, we will have enemies. You know, the cross means rejection, persecution, suffering. Verse 24, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you, bene what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but you yourself are lost and destroyed. Meaning, if you want to gain the friendship of this world, you become an enemy of God. You know, some people, you know, they're ashamed to declare their faith. They, they want to be liked. You know, some people are, just came to my mind, maybe your husband, your wife, you know, if you're going out to maybe your work parties and things like that, you take off your wedding ring because, you know, you want to flirt, okay? You know, you, you, know, you want to be involved in their dirty jokes. You don't stand up, you know, you laugh with them. You know, you are like bitter, you stand by the fire of the enemy. Okay, the Bible says, if you give up your life for my sake, you will save, but if you, but if you hang on to you, you will lose it. Okay, verse 25, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, you gain this friendship and lose your soul? So if anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns to, in his glory and the glory of, his, of the Father and the holy angels. You see, today there is no fear of God among today's generation. Even among Christians, there is no fear of God. The word of God is watered down. Okay? And compromise in order to be accepted by society. We want people to like us. So we compromise. We don't preach the full gospel. But we need not to be ashamed, but declare whom we serve and whom we believe. Proverbs 8 13 says, All who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, hate pride and arrogance, corruption and perverse speech. Proverbs 16 6 says, by fearing the Lord, people have won evil. Romans 3.18 says, They have no fear of God before their eyes. 
okay there's no fear of God people don't fear God today okay there's no fear of God so people are steeped in sin so as we close do you fear God if you're a believer and you fear God it will reflect in your life First John three seventy nine says, Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning from the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. The seed of God abides in them. They fear God. They love God. They are not afraid to declare their faith. They are not ashamed of God. But if you, are not, if you are not saved, if you've not given your life to God, now is the time for you to repent because if you don't, you will be damned. You'll spend eternity in hell. God loves you. And that's why he sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. So if God is speaking to you right now, and if, if you're not surrendering your life to Christ, then now is the time. But if you're a believer, you're already saved, but you are living one leg in the world, one leg in the church. You need to repent too and ask God to forgive you. And God is good and ready to forgive if you, you know, make that commitment, if you rededicate your life to Christ. You give the strength. But if you are not saved, if you're not giving your life to Christ, you can't be today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Do not miss this opportunity. No one knows the promise of tomorrow. If you die in your sins, you go, go straight to hell. Uh, so if you are listening to me, if God has made it possible that you are listening to me today and you've not received Christ, you can receive it now. You say, how? By calling on the name of the Lord. You say, how do I do that? You admit to God you're a sinner and put your faith in Jesus Christ. His death his resurrection the Bible says you'll be forgiven you put your faith in Christ as the only way of salvation and if you like to do that you can join me in this prayer to help you make that commitment are you ready until you pray with me in this way Heavenly Father I come to you in the name of Jesus I admit I have sinned against you. In my thoughts, my words, my actions. So I ask you to forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And he rose again on the third day. I accept him into my life. I confess him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for making me your child today. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. If you said that prayer, welcome into the kingdom of God. You're a child of God. You are born again. And then you need um, a, a Bible-believing church where you fellowship regularly. And you keep on listening. And uh, may the Lord bless you. And... Um, Thank you for listening for, uh, and thank you for your prayers and I'm going to encourage you to share these messages so others can be blessed. Um, uh, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel or join us uh, on our Facebook. So God bless you for watching and I'll see you next time as we complete the second part on how to overcome temptation. God bless you and see you next week. <laughs>